If you're thinking about your YouTube channel as a business, then something that's very necessary for you is an email list. And whether you already have an email list or you're thinking about starting one or you need some convincing of why you should start one as a YouTube creator, there's some pros to it that we think are pretty important for you to consider. We're going to talk through those today as well as some practical next steps you can use to actually start growing your email list from your YouTube channel. We'll talk about all that here today coming up. Hey, welcome to the Video Creators Podcast presented by vidIQ. You know how you put a lot of time and energy into your YouTube channel for not nearly enough growth? Yep, we get it. We are here today to help you change that. Hello creators, how are you? It's great to see you again for another Video Creators Podcast episode where every week we wanna help you grow your YouTube audience and grow your business so you can reach more people and change their lives with the message that you're spreading and the business that you're growing that is hopefully serving other people very, very well. Thank you for letting us be a small part of that here with you today. As a part of any online company, especially an internet company that's based on content like YouTube, and especially if you're positioning yourself to sell courses as some sort of thought leader or or personal brand or something, I, we think having an email list is a really important part of that. Now, I wouldn't say like every channel out there needs it, but it is certainly something that I think more channels than not should be considering. And I'm even preaching to myself here a little bit because I need to do this on my personal brand. I've been starting to do. <laughs> I actually started working on this over uh, President's Day weekend uh, with some the, the the day off we had, and then I just got tired and took a nap instead. But like I said, I'm getting old. <laughs> but this is all really important stuff. So I'm excited to dive into it here today with two of the YouTube strategists here on our team at Video Creators Ingrid. From North Carolina. I think people are going to start thinking that's your last name, North Car from North Carolina. North, from North Ingrid Carolina. from North Carolina. <laughs> and Ingrid's Sam's from last name California. is from Florida. <laughs> yeah. so, it feels yeah, very from like, Florida. like regal, like <laughs> Sam who hails from Central Florida. <laughs> <laughs> from the castle <laughs> with his that. princess. No, not princess. Queen, I suppose. Queen, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be weird otherwise. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what would you call Michael? Ingrid, is he, is he King? Oh, feels King. a little too strong, but I don't know. What do you think? What Why? would you say? He could be the king. He, he okay. likes to think of him. He's from New York. He considers himself a king. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that sounds like therapy. But we'll let you two deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, we want to introduce you to a creator from this community in a creator spotlight. And this week, we have a great question from Ryan Gentles. He left us an audio voice message, and we would love for you to do the same. Go to speakpipe.com slash video creators and leave your message for us to uh, highlight you in an upcoming episode. But uh, this is Ryan and his question, and then we'll answer it right here for him today. Hi there. My name is Ryan Gentles. Got a quick question. i am uh, got a book coming out that is called Did Jesus Wear Undies? And I'm going to pair it with a podcast that's a 30, 45 minute long form content. But I also would like to overlap that with a YouTube channel and utilize video content of me actually discussing these questions that are from my kids and answering them biblically and on a uh, short time frame due to uh, you know attention span. So I'm wondering, just listening to one of your uh, videos or one of your podcasts about utilizing the last 20 seconds to put a, a, a picture in there for them to click and continue on the content or on your page rather on that platform. Should I do those short videos and then say, hey, if you want the longer form um, or see to see the video discussion, click on here, boom, go to the long form content, as well as maybe the next question. Uh, I'm not too sure, I, but I do want to video my podcast just so um, I have all that um, content ready to overlap on different platforms. Thanks. Did Jesus wear undies? Is that what he said? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> That's what a good question. I, <laughs> I, saw you, I saw you laugh. <laughs> I was like, boxers or briefs? I don't know. I kind of thought it was just a tunic. <laughs> Neither? I don't know. It feels irreverent now. Um, yeah. So does he do a call to action to long form from shorter clips to drive viewers to long form content or the next video? What would you guys 
would you recommend? I feel like we do this all the time, <laughs> you know, here on our channel. Uh, you just have to really kind of think about the audience for both. You know, that's the one thing that I would just I would just say is the people who watch your regular shorter, are they going to want to click on a longer piece? Is that the same audience? Or um, is it going to provide that much more value? Then absolutely. I would say go for it. So you're saying do promote your longer f- your long it form depends, content is what I'm saying is it depends. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. But in his, in his case, I don't know. We don't know who his target audience is. Yeah. Um, we got a little idea of the value prop, mm-hmm. but if he wants to do a podcast that's 35 to 40 minutes long and then a YouTube channel with shorter content, it sounds like he's putting the podcast on Apple and Spotify and places like that. Um, so he's going cross platform even, At the end of his podcast, should he be doing a call to action? Um, He says, from the long form to the short form. I would say, as a general rule of thumb, yes, cross-promote your content, especially if you want it to be discoverable. So promote your long form from the short form and vice versa. I think it does depend when it comes to the goal of the video. If your goal is to sell something or get someone to an email list, like we'll talk about here in a second, or something like that, then you'll want a different call to action. But cross-promoting your content on other platforms, I think, is good. Uh, It's especially good if you would just put the podcast on the YouTube channel, and then you don't have to make people leave YouTube to go to the, the, the podcast to catch up and YouTube's getting pretty good at having, at, at, at having multiple different formats and styles and length of content all exist on one channel, whether it be shorts, long form podcasts, live streams, something else. Uh, it all kind of ends up performing fairly well. So uh, that's what I would do. Well, plus aren't 50% of podcasts listened to on YouTube anyway. <laughs> I think they said they were discovered on YouTube. I don't know if listened oh, to, but the, but the actual stat was they're most uh, over half of podcasts are discovered on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I actually listened to a ton of podcasts over President's Day weekend on YouTube. On YouTube? On YouTube? Yep. Yeah. YouTube dot yeah, com slash podcast yeah. is a great destination. It's just if you mm-hmm. just want to listen to stuff in the background while you're working and stuff, that's a great place to go. Appreciate the question, Ryan. Uh, if you have a question that you would like us to answer or address in an upcoming episode, speakpipe.com slash video creators. Record a quick little audio message there on your mobile device or your computer, whatever you got in front of you. And we'd love to process it here together and even fight over it. I'm like, I'm waiting for a good fight, <laughs> like a good disagreement <laughs> where it's like, no, Ingrid, you're wrong. Sam, you're wrong. And you're like, no, Tim, you're wrong. Here's why. Oh, okay. Like, I, that's, that's fun. <laughs> Again, I'm, Tim's feeling feisty. I'm not saying I'm proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> it just holds my interest. <laughs> That's most people's interests. I bet. I bet any, during any good conflict in these episodes, we will not uh-huh. see audience retention go down. Probably that segment. not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Tim, I'm curious because we are going to talk about email lists. Uh, I'm going to ask you the million dollar question right off the bat. Million dollars. I'm interested. <laughs> well, actually, it could be worth a million dollars, right? It, <laughs> I actually didn't even, uh, mean, it, I didn't even mean to say that, it, <laughs> but it can. Literally, it, it could be worth yeah. m- actually several million dollars. Why is an email list so important for businesses? That's, a, that's just one. The second part is... How do you grow that from YouTube? Email is another way of staying in front of your audience. Uh, I, people put a lot of effort into multi, multi-platform stuff, you know, like getting their content on all these different platforms to stay in front of people. And there's merit to that. But email, although it's not a platform, is another way of staying in front of people. And depending on who your target audience is, this might be a little different from, you know, Gen Z years and below. But especially if you're going after, you know, 20, 30, 40 year old young professionals and up, they typically check their email multiple times a day. And they don't always check YouTube multiple times a day. Uh, and so you can get in front of them by by having an email list um, and, and own that audience a little bit better uh, other than just always relying on social media platforms and algorithms and things. Now, 
the pushback would be like, well, the open rates on emails are going down and uh, they're, it's losing its effectiveness. There's better f- spam filters. And so they're getting better at anything that's coming from a, like an email list is getting filtered out anyway. And, and th- that all might be true, but uh, at video creators and I know some of the stats behind um, our parent company, Vid- uh, VidIQ, uh, emails and, and other clients that we've worked with and such. And my experience has been that email open rates on a good email can still certainly be in the 30%. So uh, out of 100%, of course. So if your email list is 1,000 people, you could still get 300 opens, which you know might be uh, – or, or on average, you might get 200 opens. So 20-ish percent might be uh, – and the older the list and the larger it gets, sometimes the smaller that number goes – that percentage goes down. But um, – you're going to post something to your YouTube channel. And let's say you have a thousand subscribers. If you get 200 views on that, you're happy. You're like, okay, Mm -hmm. that seems about right. And that's kind of how I look at it. Like I could post this anywhere else and, and I have less control over how that content gets received than I do through email. And in email, there's not an algorithm other than spam filters that I've got to watch. And there's ways to get around them and and, uh, fairly simple ways not to get around it, like to hack it, but just to make the viewer want your emails more so that the spam filters start learning like, oh, this isn't spam. This is valuable content people actually want. Let's just put it right in their inbox instead of putting it on the promotions tab or something in Gmail. So uh, those, I don't know. I don't know how many reasons I gave you there, but there's some. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. So when we look at the second half of the question, like how do you actually grow your email list on YouTube? Would it be practical to reverse engineer it or start from the beginning? Uh, what would the reverse engineer look like? I, I don't know. You tell me because you're the, this is like the thing that you did to really help grow video creators, right? You started with, yeah, the, you uh, started we, with YouTube. Yeah, I had done several YouTube channels prior to Video Creators, which I started in 2000, uh, January 2nd, 2013. And I had learned through all of them that if I wanted to make Video Creators actually work, I was going to need a better way to stay in touch with these people than to always have to make a video, post it, and then hope people see it. So getting them to an email list and growing that email list, although in the beginning it wasn't huge, but it was certainly enough to support my wife and our family, our wife, my wife, <laughs> our family, and, uh, and and start allowing the business to grow and create a, uh, generate revenue to start building a team, even though the channel was relatively small compared to other channels that had teams of our same size. But that was because we were taking a business approach that extended beyond YouTube and it wasn't just ad revenue and sponsorships and brand deals and, and Patreon and things like that. It was, it was like, if a brand's going to pay me $5,000 to do a brand deal, they're doing that because they know my audience is worth like $25,000. And, and so the only reason that math would make sense for them to give me 5,000 is if they make 20, 25,000 from what they gave me. And so I started thinking like, if my audience is worth just 25 K, why don't I make my own product and, and serve them better with something I know will help them than, and just give, take this 5k. And I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that model by any means, because uh, there is more that goes into having to develop and create and service a project and customer uh, support and uh, things like that. Uh, so there's a lot more that goes into it, but I prefer to do that than try to keep up with the generating eyeballs game on YouTube. Uh, and so just using YouTube primarily to reach the people that I wanted to serve and growing the email list from that, which if you think about it, shouldn't make sense. You get people who want to watch video and then you give them text that, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with myself though. <laughs> it's just kind of, it, it shouldn't have worked. But it it did, and maybe it could have worked better on other platforms and things. But it it still worked. So, um, so so the goal is to get them onto the list. That's the goal. Yes. Right. So what do we have to do? And then we're going to nurture that list when you have it mm-hmm. in order to sell, because there's an entire strategy mm-hmm. just in sales on an email list. But what do you do, or is there even a strategy? Um, 
for something that you can do on YouTube to help maybe get that viewer further along in being vested in you so that when they maybe get to that list, they're deeply invested. Well, let me tell you what I don't do. And then I'll have Sam tell you what we should do Mm. or what we do do, which is kind of funny. Uh, um, Sorry. (laughs) Ingrid took a drink. You said it's old, but I don't know. (laughs) I like to do that every time I take a sip. (laughs) It was just good timing. I wasn't even on purpose. Uh, So... What we don't do, which is what we commonly see people do, is that the, they feel like the goal, the people who are trying to grow an email list, I think the goal of every email is to plug their email list or a lead magnet or something. At the end of every email, they've got several call to actions and one of them will be get this thing. Or sometimes I've seen uh, like more aggressive people say, hey, welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about this and the other thing. But if you want to get this free guide, make sure you sign up here and they'll take like a minute to pitch that. And then they get into the content someone clicked for. And that's just a really good way to have really slow growth on your on your channel uh, because people are abandoning at that point. They clicked for one thing and now you're pitching them. They're like, who are you? And I've never even seen you before. Why would I want that thing from you yet? Uh, and so the approach that I've taken and that we tend to use with our clients is our three bucket strategy. So Sam, you want to walk us yeah. through the three bucket strategy and then maybe I'll put some email specifics on the third bucket. Yeah, well, first, I think, um, Tim, I think you're wrong. I disagree. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just kidding. So I got a little excited there. Uh, the three bucket strategy being, maybe if I set it up first, because I didn't do that, is like every video you do should be designed for a specific goal, for a specific, a specific purpose, and uh, and should be, yeah, designed to do that. And every video you do should fall into one of these three buckets, basically. Yeah. Um, not overlap, not try to do bucket two, three, and four all at the same time or whatever. It's just these three buckets. One, every, every video goes into one bucket and that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like on top of that, the reason that we separate these buckets, especially the the sales bucket, is because if you are pitching your email list or trying to send somebody off the platform in every single video, that's a negative signal to the algorithm for growing your channel. It's YouTube's going to be less likely to, you know, surface a video that is going to be sending people off the platform. Um, so if you're doing that in every video, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot a little bit as far as growth goes. So if we're thinking about an email list and how to utilize the channel, like more specifically the three bucket strategy to do that the most strategic way that we can. I would think, you know, we're gonna have our discoverable bucket and our community bucket, which are our two vehicles to do the growth with our discoverable bucket, bringing in all the people. Um, You know, ideally we're gonna have some really good engagement in those videos um, as far as kind of creating some connection points Um, you know, we talk a lot about like value proposition and creating content for the right audience. You know, they'll be able to kind of connect with you on a more human level. Um, we've got our community bucket, our community videos that are going to grow the know, like, and trust factor. And ideally by the point that somebody sees a sales video, which is the video that we're going to have our pitch to the email list in, they've probably already seen a discoverable video and a community video. They kind of know who you are. They kind of know what you're about. They're probably going to be much more likely to sign up for something like that. Um, versus kind of the example that you gave Tim, as far as like, even in the opening seconds of a video, Hey, don't, you know, check out my email list before we get into the content. And they're like, I don't even know who you are yet. (laughs) You know, I don't, I don't care about whatever you're selling. Cause I think at the end of the day, someone's going to be much more likely to buy from someone that they know, like, and trust, um, versus, you know, just pitching something at the, at the beginning of the video. Yeah. So the sales video then <clears throat> is the one where you're going to be pitching the email list. So instead of just always pitching the email list, we're going to say, let's, let's first grab this person's attention and just serve them really well with a discoverable video. Let's bring them into our brand, introduce them to who we are. Very few people will convert into a transaction, even if the transaction is just giving you an email address on the very first time they've heard of you or been exposed to you. I mean, just think of your own behavior on YouTube. Have you gone and purchased something the very first time 
that you were introduced to someone's product <laughs> on, on YouTube? Probably, probably not. You were just like, I don't know. We need to build some trust. We need to see if I really like this person. Or can they really deliver all their promises or whatever the case may be? And so instead of trying to sell, sell at a point where they're not really typically ready to buy, and I don't mean buy in terms of just a monetary transaction. I mean, buy in terms of making, taking it, signing up your email list even that's a transaction in my mind um then let's not do that on every video but we'll first make discoverable content that just serves them really well and then make community content for them that they start to engage with us and start to know like and trust us and and then we'll make the sales video that is geared towards specifically pitching the, the action I want them to take next. So if the action is to download this free PDF or this guide or this free course or um, this event or whatever app, I don't, it doesn't really matter what it is. The goal of that video is designed, the entire thing is designed so that by the time they hear you pitch that thing, they're like totally ready to take it. Uh, so for example, for me, I would do a video on uh, sub for sub will get your channel terminated, which is true. And I point out in the con in the video, mm -hmm. like, hey, look, it says right here in YouTube ser terms of service that if you do sub for sub, it's considered spam and it's grounds for termination. So how do you grow your channel instead? Well, I put together this free guide for you. It's called The Secret to Building Your YouTube Audience. You can get it completely for free, link down below. Um, and in this, you're going to get six steps that you need to follow for to really grow a, a craft, a, a content strategy around your channel that can actually grow. Step one, you're going to get this. Step two, you're going to get that. Step three, and if you, by the time you get to the end of these steps, and you've, then you'll have a comprehensive plan for going from A to B with your channel. It's not rocket science. You just need the right process, you know. So I'm just giving it a good pitch. It's not like a quick download my thing or sign up, but I'm it's, I'm taking like a solid minute or two to pitch this PDF because I'm like, you want to grow your channel. That's why you're doing stuff for sub, but it's not working. It's your channel terminated. That's like the opposite of growing your channel. <laughs> so here's how you do it instead. And the link is above the fold below the video. I've got interactive car popping ups on the end screen. The whole thing is designed to get people to download, buy, sign up, register, whatever the case might be. It's not really all that different. Really, when you think about it from email strategy, even, you know, if you open up an email and you start to sell me something right off the bat, no, yes. Why would I, yeah. you have, there's no value there, right? So yeah, where's that, where's that free thing I signed up for? Yeah. yeah. And if you're not, if you wouldn't do that in, in, in a success in your email, why would you do it on YouTube? That's the part that I don't really get. <laughs> um, yeah, a, a good email a can, a campaign when people first sign up is, I shouldn't say, a, a standard one, I should say, mm -hmm. is first email, they get the thing they, that was they were promised, the, the guide, the PDF, the tickets, the whatever. And then there's a few emails sent typically every day. Uh, one a day. So it would be a couple of emails of here's more value you didn't know that you needed or thinking about with this problem that eventually your product's going to solve. But right now, you know, you don't say that yet. You're just saying, here's the problem. Here's how you solve it, giving some good information. There's emails introducing them to you and your brand, what you're all about. Just nurturing that relationship, helping them out, generating goodwill, making them feel like, wow, I kind of want to keep, eat, well, I, uh, keep getting these emails. I want to keep signing up or I want to keep opening them. This is really good, helpful, valuable stuff. And then by email like five, you're starting to introduce the product. And maybe by email six, it's just like, just like that sales video. It is just a dedicated pitch. Um, I, I signed up for someone's free course. They had a jujitsu course a couple of days ago. And I was like, oh, okay. It's normally, I forget, like... 38 bucks, 47 bucks or something like that. It's for free for the 24 hours. So someone else posted about it. I'm like, okay, I'll sign up. And I did. And then the very next email I got was like, you have uh, 48 hours to get 40% off your next purchase. And another email, 24 hours to get 48, get whatever off your next purchase. <laughs> Final hours. And then I was like, I'm not, I don't have any watch your course yet. Like, I don't even know if it's good. Why would I spend money on another one? Yeah. And then... <laughs> And then, uh, the, so the time went by and then sure enough, it was like, okay, here's 40% off coupon for your next <laughs> course. I'm like, what happened to the 48 hour thing? <laughs> you know? And it's just coupons. And I'm like, come on, like, yeah. thank you for the discount. But what would have been better 
as if <laughs> they had sent like, thank you so much for your purchase. Um, you know, you bought this course and uh, that means you're, you, they, they should have had like a custom email follow up for that course, which is, this is your problem that you're working on. Here's some more things to help you with that. Things that aren't in the course, extra ideas, and just get me reading into the habit of reading their emails and opening them. Now, all I do as soon as I see them, I just delete them. And I'm thinking about like, okay, I don't need to stay on this email list. I'll unsubscribe. So... This happens to There's me that. too with a lot of art things that I buy, especially when I, I buy them off. It, you know, I'm a sucker, I think, sometimes for art courses over on Instagram. And I buy these things and then I get like just people, I feel like they vomit sales <laughs> content at me, right? And I have the very same reaction that you did. And it kind of makes me think too of like the through line, even to YouTube a little. Um, and when I think I think of creators that we uh, we work with, sometimes they come in and just like you were saying earlier, like before they've even delivered value, they're pitching a sale yeah. to a course. Or subscribe and it's just, even. Right. But every single video, sell, sell, sell. And really when you step back and you look at it, how does that help the viewer? Well, there is a – the, 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 that tactic is not done without reason. And the reason is uh, statistically, there are people who will buy. And mm -hmm. the and the, the psychology behind it is that if someone signs up for a free course and they've already entered in their email, they've done all this stuff, they're in the, m the mood to buy, which is why we here at Video Creators do an upsell after someone buys 30 Days to a Better YouTube channel. There'll be, uh, or no, it's not there anymore. We removed it. But there used to be an upsell to our uh, monthly academy membership, yeah. which is a whole library of courses for a monthly, a monthly fee. Um, we stopped doing that just because um, as we are transitioning and enfolding more and more into vidIQ since they acquired us in, in the last September, that that became less and less important. So we just stopped that. But, um, but yeah, so we... The, the psychology is when people are already in the mood to buy and they've already indicated that they are statistically more likely to continue just to do an upsell. That's why checkout counters have like all the impulse buys there when you're trying to check out. It's not because everyone buys them, but enough people buy it to make it worth it and keep, keep that there. So it's not a bad strategy necessarily from a sales, but I don't think it's the best strategy from a relationship perspective, from a long term. Yeah plan uh, but so that's how I do it so anyway so f so you would need it in order to actually practically do this you would need some sort of free they call it a lead magnet it could be a PDF it could be a guide it could be a worksheet it could be um, printable templates it could be whatever is valuable to your audience and, and get in something you give away in a scalable fashion for free so like physical products might be a difficult I have seen people do like a free copy of my book, just pay shipping type of thing. Um, but for the most part, it's typically a a digital product of some kind. That, and you write a, a pretty brief sales page for it. Not like there's one of these ongoing, like infinite scroll type of pages for something free. It's typically um, a headline, a few bullet points, and then a sign up box, and maybe uh, a graphic that makes that kind of pitches the value of what this thing is, and maybe a couple other pain points or questions about it, something like that. Or pain points that it solves, and bullet points beneath that. Pretty simple, and uh, and then it's just a good follow up sequence of emails that automatically get sent, like we already talked about, and then and then. I do think it's important to have a good newsletter strategy, not like get people on your list. They go through these five emails and then that's it. And they never hear from you again. Uh, it's, uh, we send out like Caitlin, our producer. Hi, Caitlin. <laughs> she takes these podcast Hi, episodes and will uh, turn them into a good email campaign that, of a newsletter. It's just really good, high value. We're very rarely pitching in those. We just want people to get good value, open the emails and be like, wow. I, I like, and, and that's been happening. We even had uh, Jim Lauterbach from, um, he's the mm -hmm. former um, CEO uh, of VidCon. Um, uh, inside, inside creator, no, not creator insider. What's it? I forgot what he called. He has a newsletter, and he plugged our newsletter because he's like, I read every single email of yours, and other people <laughs> like 
at vidIQ or reading them now and posting them in Slack being like, my gosh, every week they're so good. Like each one of these should be turned into like a, a course or something. And so that's what we want. That's what we want people to have is like, I need to watch, I need to read every single one of them because they're so good. And then Caitlin also takes that content and turns it into uh, LinkedIn posts and she turns it into emails. She turns it into blog posts and all from this one podcast conversation. So She's going to be talking about herself, I think, while she edit while she writes this one up. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, keeping that person engaged. So it's not just like five emails and see ya. It's a like how do I continue to serve this person and help meet their needs and solve the problems that they signed up for this list, intending to have solved on an ongoing basis. Uh, and then every once in a while, you can do another promotion. You can do another sale. You can interrupt your normal thing in order to like generate. Uh, sales for something. And I think that's totally fine um, because you, again, by that time, hopefully you spent more time nurturing those relationships and earning trust and credibility and establishing yourself as a thought leader and things like that. So that when the opportunity for this course to open up again, sales are now available now, or got this new product or this new opportunity or coaching, whatever it is that you can, you have a, a list of people who are already actively engaged and ready to, to, to make that purchase at that point. So that's what we did and, video creators for years. It was and you just rinse and repeated list. that over and over again, right? Yeah, that email list. Um, yeah, that's yeah. We even had waiting lists that's, uh, for a lot of this stuff too. But it was all through through email. It's a powerful, powerful strategy for business and from YouTube. YouTube can really play. I feel like a really integral part. Um, because you have this opportunity to really go wider and reach new audience. And like Tim said, just like do this over and over again and come up. You Would you suggest coming up with multiple um, like PDFs like later down the line or are you always pitching to the same one? Uh, there's two different schools of thought there. Uh, the one that's taken more traction in the l l past few years is having multiple different lead magnets and pitching mm -hmm. the one at the end of the video that's more relevant for that video, uh, which I've done. But I did just fine with just having one really solid one that I knew addressed the pain point of every creator of ours had. And that that's the secret to building your YouTube audience, that, that's, that guide for creating your own growth strategy. And if anyone's interested in that, uh, if you just go to videocreators.com and at the very top, there's a button called free guide. Just click on that button and it'll take you right there. And if you want to see what a landing page could look like for, for a lead magnet, you can just look at our, our format there and do something similar if you want. But yeah, so sick. <clears throat> the headline says, use this six step YouTube growth strategy to get more views and subscribers. So, and then some bullet points below it for more details about it. So it, we do have a video on ours too that pitches it, gives more information, but no one watches the video. Um, <laughs> so how many views does it have? Oh, so we reposted it a year ago. It has 74 views. It's an unlisted video. So like I said, almost nobody watches it. <laughs> So I would I wouldn't take the effort I wouldn't put the effort into putting a a video on a lead magnet thing. I guess one of the other questions that pops up if you don't have an email list already is like well, where do I start with one? Mm -hmm. How like and the Mailchimp is a really big one, not sponsored, um, but we've been using ConvertKit for years and really like it. Um, it's created specifically with creators in mind, podcasters, YouTubers, um, social media influencers and bloggers. bloggers. Yes. Thank you. So it's, it's got a lot of really good segment segmentation yeah. tools and, um, yeah, so it's uh, it's really good. I have an affiliate link for it, but I don't remember what it is. Well, we can link it. We can link it in the show notes. I've used yeah. several different. I've used Aweber, Advanced Campaign. I with another company worked with Infusionsoft and did Mailchimp and what was the old one? Something with a C. Constant Contact. Oh, remember yeah. that? Oh gosh, yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, and I myself use ConvertKit. I love ConvertKit. I. De it's definitely, to me, a really good, solid one. It's uh, our affiliate URL is, <clears throat> is videocreators.com slash convert kit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I like it. Um, I'm actually working on a free guide 
I'm going to be making for my personal podcast, the Business Family Marriage Podcast. Um, <clears throat> I put together a list of the uh, 18 rhythms that create a fruitful family, a business family, and marriage. Uh, like nice. you do the same rhythm in a business, you get this result. The same rhythm in a family <clears throat> gets the same result. You know, so if it creates fruit uh, and success in a business, it also does in a business or in a family and a marriage as well. So I started working on that guide and um, and I will start growing my own email list over there. A separate one, obviously, for video creators as well. But I'm using ConvertKit again for that one because it's, it's good. It's solid. Uh, good, good deliverability rates and just really good for podcasters, bloggers, creators in general. I feel like having an email list is definitely a smart decision. And what would be something that you would say to somebody who's been thinking about it for a long time, but feels like they just don't have all the things perfectly in place? What's your advice to that creator? Perfectly in place in terms of being able to create an email list? I need all the things in place to get my email list going. What's your what I don't do you know, recommend? There's a whole lot to put in place. You do need a website, or places like ConvertKit will also let you just create a landing page through their service too. Um, if you don't have a website, you could, yeah. And then you need to make the thing that you're going to give away. Like, what's the what's the the enticing thing that's going to get them to want to give you an email to to sign up? Um, I would recommend get, asking for first name and an email address so that you can use their first name in the emails that you send them out and personalizing it increases the open rate when they see in the little snippet there in their, in their, uh, like in Gmail, it says, Hey Tim, I like, hope you're doing well today. It feels a little more like a personal email. And it also, I think makes it less likely to go to spam when it looks personal as opposed to when it's just generic. So, um, I, I feel like getting started today is better. <laughs> Been waiting yeah. also. The thing I'm a little <laughs> bit hesitant on is to say, like, you know, every creator needs to have an email list, which I don't think is true. And I'm also mm -hmm. a little hesitant to say, like, you need another, here's another thing to add to your list of things you mm -hmm. need to do if you haven't done it already. And again, like, it might be an important thing to do. Is it the highest priority thing to do? I don't know. I got to leave that up to each, each person to decide. And maybe after listening to this, they'll change their priorities or not. You know, I don't know what's right or wrong for each person in that regard. Um, if so they want to sell something? You can sell without an email list. You just use your YouTube channel instead. People who, who do that and just go directly from YouTube to a sale. Um, you, you can, but uh, it's... It's just a little harder to always be making a video that hopefully reaches people and gets them to the point of a sale as opposed to just sending them emails where they're already hanging out multiple times a day and something that's more, a little more skimmable and things like that. So, Every week we like to wrap up with a power tip, something practical you can use on your channel to grow. And today we've been talking about growing an email list. And uh, I do have a free guide that will get you on our email list, which hopefully you'll get blown away with how much value you're going to get there. But the but the guide that you're getting is, is, is a tool that I put together called Product to Profit. And it's a step-by-step -step plan, a process that we use here at Video Creators. We've used it for years of how do we go from having a product idea to testing that product idea with our audience and and validating that we're on the right track with this because no one wants to spend a lot of time building something and then have it sell to crickets, which I've done that many times, unfortunately. So this is everything I've learned the hard way about that. So how to create the, discover what the right product is for your audience and test that idea and then create that idea. And then how do you launch it and sell it? Uh, that whole entire process. And there's a, like a survey in there that we use with our audience to make sure we're on the right track. That entire survey is on there along with the psychology behind each question we're asking and how you can, um, uh, take that question and format it for your audience and your product and your service, whatever, and get the same information. And then once you get that information, how do you format it and use it in a way that actually helps you make decisions about the product and how you're going to sell this thing? And because because ultimately your audience through the survey is actually going to be telling you, here's what I want and here's how you're going to sell it to me. <laughs> right? And so it's really invaluable information to have. So it's all for free. It's in a 
PDF called Product to Profit. If you go to videocreators.com slash product to profit, all one word, um, you can get it there and just sign up and not only get Product to Profit, the, the free guide, but also get uh, access to our newsletter and all the other valuable information we're sending out um, every week. I'm actually reading the landing page of this right now. I'm like, because I wrote it a while ago. I'm like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I even put in there 12 product and service categories idea to spark ideas uh, to break outside like the normal struggling YouTube business model and the common mistakes to avoid that prevent your online business from actually becoming profitable. Oh, yeah. I even forgot. I put my exact sales script at the end of this thing, too. Forgot about five point sales script I used generated millions of dollars for video creators and uh, and and. It's a it's a just a very simple plan for how you can start using this sales script to pitch your things and stuff too. So, man, now I'm like I need to download this and read it again. <laughs> videocreators.com slash product to profit. I know it's been a while, but I'm like, I'm just looking at this page like it's but good. Wow, I want this. Super, oh wait, I wrote it. Super, <laughs> like, super high value, right? This is a great example. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have had this experience. It's kind of a little frustrating when you'll like Google something and your stuff comes up as the number one result for it. Yeah. You're like, that's not helpful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but that's what I feel like here. Like I wrote this. Sheesh, I, sh- I should know this. But I, And I do. It's just been like seeing it laid out like this. I'm like, wow, oh, this sounds good. Anyway. Feel like I'm pitching myself, which I am, but you should go get it. Videocreators.com slash product to profit. Thank you for hanging out with us for another Video Creators podcast episode. And we look forward to hanging out with you again next week for another one. And we'll talk about something else that will help you grow your YouTube audience, your channel, and your business. See you then. Bye.